Hello and welcome to match day two review through the 23-24 season for Arsenal in our second match away from home against uh, Crystal Palace we managed to scrape through at the end with a window victory through an Odegaard penalty but there was plenty of talking points but um, before we get on to that just gonna take a look at the lineup and the substitutes this was the very first game Raya was included in the squad once again Gabriel was on the bench and again also we don't see Tierney in the squad um, but aside the change from Timber to Tamiyasu, pretty much everything else is pretty much the same as it was against Northern Forest. So, yeah, um, obviously learned that the, the news with Timber is a lot more serious uh, than we first thought, which is absolutely devastating. You know, he's, he's just got his dream move to Arsenal. He plays one competitive game for us in the league, and then he's pretty much out for the season, which is pretty de much devastating. And it's just one of those injuries you just don't know how they're going to recover, um, which is a, a major bummer for him and for us. So it's a real, real shame because he looked very, very good from what I've seen of him so far. So it's a real shame. Um, when he's going to come back, I'm not so sure. He's going to be out super long term, and he needs time to, to recover and build up, build up his fitness and get match fitness again. So, more than likely, it's just going to be the entire season he's going to be out, which is, it's crap, it's crap. But it is what it is. We can change that now. So yeah, no tyranny again, um, which for me kind of confirms he's going to be leaving. Uh, I don't know if it's advisable for him to go with Timber being injured, but I just don't think Arteta... He's, he's just not part of his plans, and it's it's crystal clear. Um, He's been a loyal servant, and, you know, he's always given 100%. So to keep him but not play him or include him, I think would be a little bit off from 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 Arsenal so yeah I think based on everything I think he is probably going to be leaving because he's too good to not even be included in the squad he can play first team football somewhere else in the Premier League and for us just to waste him like that isn't good for him and we, we can find a deal that you know, makes every party happy. So I expect him to, to leave before the end of the window. Um, but yeah, uh, David Raya started on the bench. I have to say I agree with this decision. I think he shouldn't just come in and instant re instantly replace Ramsdale. Uh, I think... It's kind of a message a little bit is that, you know, if you're going to come and get number one, you're going to have to earn it. You're not just going to be given the place. So there's some real incentive for Ramsdale to perform, and he has done so, so far this season. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are real notable, notable changes. Um, he opted for Tommy Asso instead of Gabriel. Why? Maybe he feels Tommy Asu is a bit... The, the way I'm thinking here is that he probably thinks Tommy Asu is more comfortable on the ball. But also, if we want to Tommy Asu, if we want to Tommy Asu to switch to left back, he can do it seamlessly. Gabriel, I don't think is going to do that. And I think that's also playing in... Playing against Gabriel when we set up like this. But I definitely... You know, we've got a lot of games... But number of systems that we play, I think everyone is going to see a considerable amount of game time uh, this season. So, but 
I still think Gabriel is Gabriel and Saliba is probably our best centre back partnership. But um, but yeah, other than that, I probably expected him to revert back to our typical system that we were playing last season. But he stuck with his guns. He played the same way as he did against Nottingham Forest. Um, so for the game itself, first half, first half it was complete dominance. Complete dominance without creating hard forward chances. Crystal Palace looked a little bit threatening on the break, but we were in a great amount of, had a great amount of control of the game considering we were the away team I remember when you played them last season I think the first 30 minutes we were phenomenal and then from 30 minutes up until we scored they had us pinned back and that was with 11 men this, this, this game 11 men we completely dominated up until the red card with possession and to be honest, we should have been should have been at least a goal up at half time. I think the first the first real chance is Martinelli actually. The the ball was passed in by Havertz. Ha- uh, Martinelli had a ton of space. He could have taken the shot on. Instead, he decided to get, take a couple of touches, and then the shot was blocked. That was a wasted opportunity. Um. And Ketty had one where he struck the post. That was unlucky. That was a very, very difficult chance. And he created the chance himself with a great turn. Um, and then tried to maintain his balance. Got the shot off of his left foot and hit the post. That was unlucky. That was a very difficult chance to take. But the chance that he had afterwards, that is where I... I was just crucifying him. You cannot miss a chance from six yards out with that much time and space. You can't afford to miss that at this level. And it nearly nearly bit us in the ass, but fortunately that wasn't the case. But that's the thing with Enketi, I find it in those tight in these tight games, where there's a goal in it, or we desperately need a goal. You cannot afford to miss these chances. And for me, he misses too many of them. Um, so yeah, complete dominance in the first half. And like I said, pretty much up, up until we uh, had the man sent off. <laughs> Which I can't quite believe myself. So there are two yellow cards I thought was, I don't think they were great decisions. So, I think with the way the bookings are given out for time wasted now, I think Arsenal really thought about this and was had a pretty clever system in just dragging out a little bit of time at the set piece. So, we would kind of spread out the time of who had the ball whilst taking the throw in. So it would look pretty suspect to book any of them because they hadn't had the ball that long. But that was that's kind of like how teams work with their fouls, right? They mix it around their team so they don't pick up yellow cards. So I think Havertz had a good portion of the time with the ball. Then he gave the ball to Tommy Astro to take the throw in, who was legitimately not wasting time and actually trying to find someone to throw it to. And I think he had the ball in his hand for about eight seconds. And he picked up a yellow card for it. Now, to give him the yellow card for that is extremely harsh if you consider... If you compare it to how long throw-ins take for anybody else, I think the reason why it was given was, was, was because of the pressure of the crowd. Because they were losing, they needed a goal. So when the crowd cheers in, in such a way... In both situations, it does apply that pressure to a referee to get get the ball back in play. And for Tommy Asu, who is legitimately looking to throw it to someone and having the ball in his hand for eight seconds, that is extremely harsh. Um, but I suppose I could understand it. 
I mean, like, are, is he really going to go book Havertz? I don't know. I, I, I think maybe he should have had a word with the players involved and say, and say, look, I know what you're doing. If you don't get a move on, I'm going to end up booking you both. Or just something along those lines, just to like let the players know, like, I know your game. There will be punishments, so don't try to be clever and, and try and spread, spread it around. You know, that's what I'm thinking. He could have done. But, um, you know, regardless, if you give it a yellow, don't give it a yellow. The second bookable offence is an absolute joke. The the referee has guessed. He has guessed there was a tug. Because if he's saying there's a tug, he didn't see the incident because there was no tug at all. So he was just guessing because he definitely didn't see it because it didn't happen. Like, in real time, I understand that it's it's different. Like, he, I can understand why the referee would think that, but he definitely didn't see it because it didn't happen. But what's even, what's even worse is that he couldn't even go to VAR and rectify the problem. Now, for some reason, they're not allowed to review yellow card. Yellow card, or two yellow cards for a dismissal. Why? Why... Why would you restrict yourself in such a way? Because having two yellow cards is a red card. Red card is the major incident during the game. Why would you restrict yourself from maybe being able to use the technology that's there that is supposed to aid you in getting the correct decision? Why deny yourself that? That is absolutely stupid. So it should never have been a red card in the first place. And just to rub salt in the wounds a little bit further, was that... Uh, I think it was about 10 minutes before this, IU, who was already on a yellow card, committed a much more cynical and obvious foul than what Tommy Asu did, and he did not get a booking. That, that I do not understand. How can someone foul in a much more cynical and obvious way not pick up a yellow but someone do it 10 minutes later and not even tug someone and get a yellow card for it do not understand at all um i don't think the referee had the best game uh i think he made the correct decision with giving the penalty to arsenal the penalty it's the the foul for the penalty itself was quite clear and obvious to me and katie ended up getting to the ball first goalkeeper just a little bit late in the end of catching in Ketia, it happens. Uh, and then they were looking at VAR, and I was like, what are you looking for? And then one of the defenders was, ran into Party. Party kind of held his ground, but he certainly wasn't holding or dragging the, the defender to ground. So I don't, I don't think um, that was, uh, that was worthy of uh, calling off the penalty. So I think they made the right decision there. Um, and then there was another incident later in the game where Eze put the ball past or between Party and Rice, and he went over. There was a little bit of contact from Party, but if you were to look at the replay, Party is trying to withdraw his leg. It's not like he's he's made the contact himself. His leg is there and he's trying to remove his leg and Eze has gone down. Now people say, oh, there's contact. Well, it's one a contact sport and contact doesn't mean a foul. So I think they made the correct decision with that one. There's, there's, no, there's no doubt there's contact between the players, but I don't think it was a foul. Um, whether he dived, I don't. Don't, don't necessarily know but I definitely don't think it was a penalty um, but yeah those are some of the referee decisions that kind of stood out to me um, so yeah the red card changed the game completely we kind of had our backs to the walls and yeah Crystal Palace had all the ball and didn't really create too much I thought we defended extremely well we worked extremely hard actually really dug in to get the three points i think they may have had one half chance whilst we were down to 
10 men, so that was uh, really, really good. And it was a different kind of win as well. It wasn't in a beautiful fashion, it was in a more rugged, dig deep kind of fashion, which is kind of good to see because we know that we can work, win well, we can win well playing well, but um, winning under those circumstances with the red card given is really impressive and uh, puts us in good stead if you ask me. So, so yeah, if we look at the, 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 the individual performance Ramsdale, I thought his distribution was very solid. He made a few saves I expect him to make. I think he came in, claimed a cross, made a punch as well. I thought he didn't have much to do, but with what he did have to do, I thought he did very solidly. So, yeah, good performance from Ramsdale. Uh, party... Um, I was a little bit concerned about him being a little bit exposed on that side, but I thought overall he defended really well. Especially when we were down to 10 men, he he was very, very solid. His distribution, again, was overall pretty good. I thought White was good too. Um, again, distribution, fine. Defensive work, fine. Saliba, I thought he was great again. Um, his distribution was excellent. Uh, he did have one little mistake uh, where he miscontrolled it, but the the ridiculousness of the recovery tackle is absolutely is sublime. It is absolutely sublime how he timed and got that tackle in. That was so impressive, I thought. Uh, Tommy Asu, I thought he he struggled in the first half against IU. He was... I mean, he wasn't getting completely skinned, but uh, they were getting just about beyond him just to get across him. And then, even though he... I would say the red card wasn't his fault, he still got sent off. He was okay. He was okay. A little bit... Struggled a little bit defensively, and then the red card. It, it, the game itself, he was all right. Um, but yeah, I'd say it was okay. Like, overall, it was a little bit mixed. Um, Rice, I thought, was great. And it, really, it was really highlighted to me when we had the 10 men. And Eze in particular was looking dangerous. And uh, he would, you know, Odegaard would try to show him one way. And he would just, like, go past Odegaard like it was nothing. But then he'd come up against Rice. And uh, he, he wouldn't get past him. He was, he was very, very solid. But his work rate was immense. Ball distribution overall was very good. He created an excellent chance for Eddie and Ketty in the first half. Yeah, really good performance from Rice. Really, really good performance. Odegaard was... He was quiet, but he was very cute. He... I don't remember him giving away possession. His passing was solid. Uh, part of some neat, intricate play. And actually... Um, I was actually kind of glad he took the penalty. Um... And I wonder why. I wonder why he decided to take it on. Maybe he thought that, you know, it's it's nil-nil. We definitely need to score. Maybe it's in Saka's mind. He thought maybe just as the captain, you know what? I'll take responsibility here. As the captain, I'm feeling confident. And the penalty was confident. He took it well. And... You know, maybe maybe, he's, maybe there was something in it. Maybe he sent something from Saka. Um, so maybe there was something that's maybe there was something that we didn't see as as outsiders, but maybe there was something something really good that we perhaps didn't see from Odegaard there, and also like a really nice touch. Is like, can you imagine? This happening at PSG, they fight over to take the penalty. 
Whereas between these two, I don't think it was about themselves. It was always about what was going to get the best result for Arsenal. I think Saka may have thought, you know, he's probably more confident. He didn't. He's probably more confident than I am at the moment in taking a penalty. It's best for the team. Go for it, dude. And there's no drama about it, which is, which is kind of cool. Saka, again, it's it's uh, it must be so difficult to play whilst having two men on you the entire game. His ball retention, his passing, again, very good as usual. We just, overall as a team, we just lack that cutting edge in creating multiple chances. But he, he was solid though. He, the ball possession, everything was, it was overall very, very solid. Uh, Martinelli. Martinelli. Um... Like I've already mentioned, I thought in the first half there was a chance he, he should have taken the shot on. And he decided not to. That was a little bit wasteful. Um, I mean, he didn't do an... He didn't, he didn't do a great deal. Like, again, he worked hard. Did okay with possession, but again, just didn't have that cutting edge, really. Um... And we had Enketia. Enketia. It's a bit of a mix bit of a mixed one, bit of a weird one again. Um I thought some of his play was really good actually. Like when he got the ball and he would turn and create his own chances from his own individual bit to skill. Very really positive. However, Again, like I've already touched on, when it comes down to it and you need those goals to kill off games, to win games, he wasn't able to take them. Now, I forgive him for the first one against the post. That was a difficult chance. But like I said, the chipped effort, you can't miss that. You can't miss that. Um, but yeah, um... There was also an incident in the thing in the first half when he had the board on the right hand side and we have players over and I don't know, maybe he felt he couldn't get the ball across, but he didn't even try. If he gets the ball across, we have a real great opportunity to score, but he didn't even try to get the ball across, which is kind of weird to me. So I don't know. There's like there's good moments there, but for me, He's got to do better if he's going to start. He's got to tuck away those chances more often than not. Um, and we had Zinchenko, Kiwio, Gabriel, Jorginho all came on to do a job. The job was prevent Palace from scoring. And we all worked hard. They dealt with the crosses that came in. I was really actually, I was really pleased with the with those substitutions actually. Um Zinchenko it was coolness. They were putting high balls in the box and we had the way he adjust, was adjusting the team. So at one point we had Saka at left back and then Party was at right back and then eventually he brought on the centre backs, put White over, we had QE or Saliba Gabriel dealing with the high balls in the box. Jorginho in into uh into the central midfield again just to get some fresh legs and just basically defend until the uh to the whistle basically. So I was quite pleased with the changes to this game. Um and there's just one other player that I've not actually touched on yet, and that's Habits. Now I can. People are continuing to slag him off him and want him out already, and I don't think this is fair. And after seeing him in the first three games so far, so the Man City game, Nottingham Forest, and, and Crystal Palace, my feelings about him have been a little bit 
underwhelming. And then I kind of looked a little bit more into what he's actually doing. Because, like I said, I felt a little bit underwhelmed in his performance. And for me, he's a bit of a difficult one to round to to sum up so far. Now, my stance originally was 65 million for a player who had a very mediocre season with Chelsea. He would miss a lot of big chances. Um, and like I said, underwhelmed with the signing itself, didn't really understand it, but if Arteta's bringing him in, then, you know, he must see something. And I think we've seen a little glimpse of it against Man City in how I think he's going to use him in, in those games. You kind of got a bit of a target man who can hold the ball up, can, can compete for duels in the air, physical. And then you've got a player who is very spatially aware like he's not like a playmaker kind of type um but he is very good in his movement and i will i will say that much for him so i think he's going to play a multitude of roles for us actually and i think it's really important that he gets as much game time as possible so he can bed into the team get used to the system grow in confidence But yeah, um, he, I, for me, he is going to need to do a little bit more with the ball. Because I feel like he, I want to see him like uh, grab no, grab the grab the get, getting by the scruff of the neck kind of thing, but kind of like want to make the difference, want to to really create something. Because what I've seen so far is that he has done the more simpler things well. He's given passes. Most of his decisions have been pretty decent, you know, with the ball. But it's been nothing flashy, and I think that's why. People have been like, oh, he's poor. I don't think he's been poor. I don't think he's been poor at all. He's just done very, very basic things with possession and nothing more. But I do notice he work. He does work incredibly hard. He works incredibly hard and he gives us, like I said, a little bit different sometimes. He was playing number eight. He was playing eight for us tonight. And then at one point he was playing up front to hold the ball up for us. So we can use him in different ways. But yeah, I think his biggest strengths are when we when he doesn't have the ball, when he's either, you know, his work rate in defense in defense or his like his movement in in the spaces. That for me is his biggest strengths and those things are more difficult to recognize in a player. Typically, like, when a person rates someone, it's it's a lot easier to, like, see if Saka goes past two players. It's like, oh, my God, that was amazing. Whereas the more subtle things, it's much easier just to, to miss. And I think this is where Havertz is, is falling under. Now, because I'm saying this, it doesn't mean that I don't think he can improve in this performances when he's got the ball and he, he can make the difference because I think he certainly needs to but what I'm also saying is the is the work rates and the stuff he does off the ball is not being recognized so when people say I think he, when people say uh, he's been poor I don't agree with that I think there's more to come and I think he he needs to deliver more but I don't think he's been poor at all but yeah just I'd say look, give him time give him time give him confidence give him minutes on the pitch 
Um, that's all I can say about that. Um, and the other thing that I really wanted to touch on is Trossard. I really, really, out of the starting lineup, I would have switched Trossard in for Enketia. That'd be my over. Uh, that'd be my my qualm. I would have wanted Trossard to start in the very first game against Nottingham Forest. Didn't happen. Didn't he happen here? Can understand why he didn't come on as a substitute because of the circumstances. But he needs to be getting game time because he is too good to be sitting on the bench when Inketi is in the starting lineup. I think Trossard could be starting up front. And I really, really hope that um, he gets some minutes against Fulham because otherwise I could I could understand him get, getting a little bit annoyed if he's not getting game time. Because like I said before, he he was performing he performed very well for us last year and during preseason. So I don't really quite know why he's not getting more minutes. But that's just my take on it. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.